Well, hello, Crime Stoppers. So, oh, look at that. Hair out of place already. <laughs> uh, what does it mean if I have a hair out of place? What does it mean if my... It's a double Windsor. What does it mean that I'm wearing a pink shirt? Oh, it's not buttoned down. What does it mean... What words do I use? See, this PC policy we've got going on, this PC republic we're living in, it's not even a republic, it's not even a democracy, it's an oligarchy. That link's down there. Many people will tell you it is an oligarchy, not a, <clears throat> all these ideas we have out the window. Put a link down there about deep capture. They control the very words we use. Racist. They threw racist at Clive Bundy. Well, congratulations, Clive. You know you've uh, risen to the point where they need to take you down because they're throwing the race card at you. Is it a distraction? Absolutely. This whole Clive Bundy thing is a distraction because on the grand scheme of things, it's actually a pretty small deal. But on the idealistic uh, scale, it's actually pretty important. Justice versus injustice, right? Liberty versus tyranny. I don't care what laws are trying to enforce, right? There was a time in this country, you know, in the 50s, you may forget this. It wasn't very long ago before, right? When they could not take your property for non-payment of taxes. Anyway, there used to used to be, you own your property. You actually owned it. Now you rent it from the government, but you think you own it. Anyway, the point being, because I don't want to digress here, they control the words we use. Further than that, they control the meaning of the words to the point where they'll tell you what it means if a person uses the word Negro, nigger. Oh, he's a racist. So you want to do everything you can to be uh, to avoid being called a racist because then you'll be marginalized and nothing you have to say should be of import to anyone at all ever again. Completely marginalized. What does this say? Oh, look, it's a piece of paper. There's this other guy that never did show you a piece of paper. What does that say? What does that say? Does that say black? That's my birth certificate, by the way. I covered it up. Oh, and by the way, this what is this? This is I needed to show birth certificates to freaking sign my kids up for soccer. <laughs> Don't need one for president, though. Anyway, but I digress again. The idea here is, so if you are called, use the word Negro, that makes you a racist, which means that you, it's okay for us to come with 200 armed men and helicopters and do violence and do whatever we want because you're a racist. Make no mistake. I was in North Idaho when Randy Weaver and that whole Ruby Ridge thing was going down. I was 15, not even 15 minute driving distance from Ruby Ridge. I was in North Idaho at the time. We'll skip over why I was there and so forth, but the idea is very simple. These people were nothing but polite to me. Am I, you know, in favor of race? No. Does that, but see, they called him a racist, and suddenly it was okay for snipers to shoot his wife in the back of the head while she was holding a baby standing inside his house. You can't make this stuff up. The nation should have been up in arms, but they weren't because he was a racist. Just let that go. That's all it takes. They don't want you rallying around anybody. They don't want you standing up to injustice. They don't want you standing up at all. They want you to shut up and pay your taxes. They want to extract as much wealth from you as they can between the time you were born and the time you die as is possible. Make no mistake, that's what this is about. Now, this is textbook case for you to observe, playing out in front of you, how they use English to control you. The connotations of the very words we use. They control the language. So they control the dialogue. So they manufacture your consent. It's that simple. It wasn't torture. It was enhanced interrogation. It wasn't a murder or an execution. We were carrying out the law. This guy owes back taxes and he's a racist. How could you possibly support him? They don't want conservatives and liberals getting together, unless it's getting together to, to, to condemn this man. I think I see these conservatives saying, well, we can't support him anymore because he's a racist. See how easy it is? See how easy it is? They have nothing but contempt for you because it's that easy. It's so easy to control. 
so easy to sway your opinion one way or the other with just a few, right? The mainstream media, the bankers own the mainstream media, and they don't want anybody standing up at all to the government, the puppet government that we have in place. You want to, you know, one of the men with some of the worst ideas and one of the worst presidents we've ever had ever in the history of this nation, history will not be kind to us or him. But if you criticized him, you were a racist. Not that the policies were poor, not that the policies were atrocious. Is it time for drug reform? Right? Portugal. Take a look at what happened in Portugal when they decriminalized over there. But does this administration have anything to do with decriminalization or speeding along the move, right? But he's not a racist. He's not into Jim Crow. The guy that was a racist was the guy that wanted to let all the nonviolent offenders out, that guy named Ron Paul. See, they threw the racist card at him, too. In fact, that was the first video I ever made because I got so pissed off when they called him a racist. And people were buying it. And then most people never followed that whole understanding what happened in this country when they marginalized Ron Paul. He was filling stadiums, and yet somehow he couldn't even get the nomination so that you could have a chance to vote one way or the other. Hmm. E pluribus unum, my friends. That's why I end these videos with E pluribus unum. United, we are strong. Divided, we are weak. And they know that they can divide us with just simple words and the connotations of those words. So if I wear a coat and a tie, I didn't put the coat on, but if I wear a coat and a tie and put my glasses on, now is now, am I more credible? Now are my ideas worth more? Am I more of a worth? Am I more worthy of your attention? It's that easy. So easy to mark, right? They marginalized Einstein when he started talking about peace. He was a rock star. He was a superstar when he was right in his in his day, and they did everything they could to, because he was talking about peace. Michael Jackson told you that they were gonna kill him because he was talking about it. Doesn't matter if it's black or white. And, harmony and love and peace. Nope. Can't have that. Martin Luther King. Name it. And now look at all the guys that have jumped on the bandwagon for the race card and you see who works for the cats. And if you don't understand the metaphor of the cats, I'll put a link down there and you can watch that. The cats control and rule over us mice. But there are so many more of us. Now, e pluribus unum. Educate self, educate others. Understand how this system works. Understand the banking and the money supply. Understand that they want you in debt and a debt slave forever. Whether it's via tax or via your education, because if you try to get an education in this nation now, you're probably going to go into debt that you'll pay off for the rest of your life. If you want a house, you'll go into debt that you're going to pay off for the rest of your life. That's why they call it a mortgage. If you, right, if you want a ranch, if you want to have land, they'll tax you. If you can't pay the tax that they say you owe, they'll try and remove you or take the land away from you. As a nation, these bankers are trying to get us to give them money for interest that they made up out of thin air. It's a lot bigger than Clive Bundy. Yes, it's a distraction, but this is textbook case how they control and manufacture public opinion by controlling the very words we use and their meanings. E pluribus unum, I'll talk to you soon.